Hey everyone, I'm Akira and in this video I'll guide you step by step through the 14 small secrets uncovered during the Secrets of Azeroth event that together all lead you to the achievement whodunit that awards you with the mount Patty, the cutest little packer out there. And if you're watching this after the event is gone, do not worry, they are still all available. You start the event in Veldragon's Inn from Preservationist Carthos. You'll first receive a mystery box containing a golden chalice and a clue. The clue wants you to find the best preserving spot for the golden chalice. Head to the bank in the Dragon and just inside to the left you'll see the perfect spot for it. Placing it will complete the preservationist step of the achievement towards Patty. Head back to Kathos and you'll receive a Tuscar ceremonial spear that you need to have identified. Head to Iskara and talk to Elder Poa who will tell you it's not Iskaran but a Kaluak spear. So now you gotta find the Kaluak who resides in Dragonblight in the Moaki Harper village. Talk to the big guy in the most middle house in the village, Elder Konani, who'll let you know the spear belongs to an explorer. You'll get a drawing of a big statue of the explorer and you can find the statue in Borean Tundra at this location. On the side of the statue you can place the spear to return it to where it belongs and you'll complete the first day of the Secrets of Azeroth and you'll be rewarded with the Inquisitive title. Head back to Valdragon and speak to Bobby Carlisle to start the next part of the achievement. And he'll give you some thinking cap notes. These notes hint at three items you'll need to get and deliver to Feng Lehut. The first item is the Thought Calculator Apparatus. To get this, you want to first speak to Irugosa, the cooking trainer inside the inn, to get an item called Thunderspine Nest Shopping List. You then have to pick up three foods, five Apexes Asiago from the cheese vendor in Veldragon Gorgon Sormu at this location, five Thunderspine Tenders from the meat vendor in Onaran Plains at this location, and five latticed stinkhorn from Snicktack in Loam at this location. Bring those ingredients back to Erogosa and she'll give you Thunderspine Nest. Bring the Thunderspine Nest to the engineering trainer in Veldragon and offer him some, and in return he'll hand you the Thought Calculating Apparatus. The next item you need is the Downy Helmet Liner. To get this you'll need to get a fresh Tirana. This can be looted from hungering Tiranas in the waters just below Veldragon. You want to feed this to Griffin, the Griffin just next to the engineering trainer, to get your downy helmet liner. The last item is the crystal ocular lenses. You want to head to Shaky Flat Lab and speak to him right here. He'll agree to make it for you if you either pay a thousand gold or agree to pay his tab at the bar in the inn. If you pay a thousand gold, you just get it straight up. Otherwise, you want to head back into the Veldragon Inn. Bow to the statue and go to the barkeep and pay his tab, which is about 350 gold. Then head back to Flatlap and get the lenses. Once you have all three items, head to Feng Lehut at this location and combine your items by simply clicking it in your bags. This will give you a quest to deliver to Feng Lehut for the Thinking Cap toy. Learn the toy and equip it. And if you can't find it in your toys, simply relog and it should be there. Once equipped, you'll get a new quest from Feng Lehut. This quest requires you to follow his arrows, and the first arrow is just above Feng Lehut. This one will lead you to the Welp Daycare, where you'll find the second arrow by the bookshelf. This arrow will lead you to the Artisan's Market, where you'll find the third arrow on the floor, next to the Leatherworking Supplies. The next one is at the Jeweler's Bench, just east from the last on a barrel. And just southeast of that is the next one by the Alchemy Bench. This one leads you to the roof of the auction house for the next arrow. And from here, you want to head to the blacksmith, where you'll find the next one just by the stairs. The clue for the next is in the seat of the aspects, just inside the entrance corridor on the left behind a fire. And the very last arrow is located in the emerald enclave just around the corner. And once you've clicked that, you want to loot the treasure just below, and then you head back to Fengli Hood, hand in the quest, and you'll get the Thinking Cap Achievement Progress. You can start on the next piece of the puzzle, once again, from Bobby Carlisle in the Inn of Voldragon. If you're not noticing the pattern yet, every time we complete a part of the Hudonet achievement, we can start the next part in the Inn of Voldragon. To complete this quest, simply head to Fengli Hood and 
obtain a Fengli's note and an item called copied artifact storage key. After this, you want to head back to the inn in Veldragon and just right of the entrance, you want to head up to the second floor. And once you reach the second floor, you head to the leftmost room and look behind the bed there where you'll find a quite a big chest loaded and you'll obtain the Maruk burial banner. This will give you a quest that you can turn in at Appraiser Sassel Sticky Fingers. This guy is located in the Emerald Enclave at this location. And here you'll get the banner appraised. Once you get it appraised, head back to where you found the chest in the first place and put back the banner behind the bed. And after this, all you have to do is head back to Fangly and you'll complete the An Inside Job part of Who Done It achievement. The next part, start in the Veldragon Inn as always from Tithris the Innkeeper. From him you'll receive a clue that leads you on a path to find the artifact Torch of Pyrath. The clues will lead you to this area here in the Waking Shores. To find the artifact you'll have to pull three hidden levers in this area. Here's the first one. And here's the second one. And here is the third one. And once you've pulled all three levers, you want to head inside this building right here. And just left of the fireplace is where you'll find the torch. Pick it up and you'll get a quest to return it to Veldragon. Simply teleport back to Veldragon and turn in the quest and you'll receive the Torch of Pyrath toy. You'll now be given a new quest that works as an introduction to the toy, as the description is this, Torch of Pyrath helps you find ancient devices that can be empowered. Anyway, you want to learn the toy and you want to head to the Ruby Enclave. Use the toy and you'll receive a buff and then you enter this building here on the right and just inside on the left you'll find a chest with Carthos's glasses. From here, just Return to Kathos and hand in the quest and you'll be done with the Torch of Pyrath part of the Whodunit achievement. Once again, for the next part, you start today's secret in the Inn of Veldraken. Today, from Bobby Carlyle. He'll give you the clerk's notes, which contains a hint. The hint states the Eastern Ashes Span map, top level of Vakthros, and console is 11-2 from Dor. So obviously we're going to Vakthros and the cords given in the clue can be found by equipping your thinking cap and looking at your buff if you want to try to find it yourself. If you're fine with me simply showing it to you, it is located right at this location. Simply click the unveiled tablet and make an etching of whatever gibberish was written on it. Bring it back to Bobby Carlisle to turn in the quest and gain the achievement progress a chilling ascent. For the next part of the achievement, you want to make sure you have activated the Torch of Pyrath through the whole thing as you'll need it. And then, as always, head into the Inn of Old Dragon to pick up today's secret from the innkeeper Tithris. He'll hand you a clue that leads you to the area just southwest of Terrakai in Onaran Plains, this location, to find an item called Idol of Onara. To find it, the clue tells you to light three braziers and they will then lead you to the idol. You can find the braziers inside the burial mounds of the area. Here are the coordinates if you're having trouble finding them. Once you're next to one of the braziers, you want to use your torch of pyrith to light them up. You know you've lit one as soon as a magnifying glass appears above your head while near one. Once you've lit all three, you'll see a text message in your chat that says the smoke from the braziers are leading you to Terrakai. So simply head to Terrakai and in the middle of the city is another burial mound and inside this one you'll find a fourth brazier. Light this one up as well and just next to it the idol of Onara will appear. Pick it up and you'll get a quest to return to Preservationist Kathos in the Veldragon Inn. Simply hearth back or fly back or whatever to Veldragon and turn in the quest. Learn the toy and you'll be able to pick up a new quest from Preservationist Carthos, which requires you to use the toy to find three hidden gems in Veldraken. Head just outside the inn, equip the toy and follow the light burning from the eyes of the idol to find the three hidden gems. I found my three just outside the inn, just by the auction house and over by the bridge going to Cascade's Edge. Once you've found your three gems, return and complete the quest and you'll get the idol of an hour of progress for the whodunit achievement. The next quest can then be picked up from Preservationist Kathos.
She'll give you a clue for the Shifting Sands, in which we get the hint to go south of Hasim in the Shifting Sands, which is about this location right here. And then she wants you to use the laser eye beam idol of Anara to search for some fragments to a tablet and then put it back together. So head off to Thaldrasis to the Shifting Sands, equip your eye beam idol and get searching. The first tablet is located just by this tree in the most northern part of the Shifting Sands. The second one can be found just a few yards east from there behind a rock. And the third is even further east inside the water of the river just by the bridge here. And once you've collected all three, simply click the fragments in your bag to put the tablet back together and then head back to Old Dragon to turn in the quest and you'll get the day 7 progress of the Houdanet achievement, Shifting Sands. Once again, the next part of the achievement starts in the inn from Bobby Carlyle. He sets you on a mission for an ancient key of sorts, and first he sends you off to Weaponsmith Corif in the Obsidian Enclave in Veldragon. So head to the Weaponsmith and speak to him. He'll give you a clue as to where you can find a mold for the key. The clue hints you to go to the Cloverwood Hollow, which is straight in the middle of an Auron Plains at this location, you want to head there and in the middle of the Sylvan Glade, you want to whip out your Torch of Pyrith and this will uncover a hastily scrawled stone. Read this and it will give you some coordinates for you to follow. Equip your thinking cap and head to the courts negative 3, negative 2, which is very close, pretty much just the southwestern pillar of the glade and here you'll find the Titan Key Mold. Bring it back to the Weaponsmith Corif in Valdragon. Turn in your quest and you'll get the achievement progress, what's in a mold. To continue with the next step, which is forging the key, head back to Bobby Carlisle in the Veldraken Inn. The first quest leads you to the weaponsmith Korif once again in the Obsidian Enclave in Veldraken. He'll give you today's clue. Read the clue and you'll be informed that you need 50 rose gold and 8 igneous flux to forge the key. The rose gold can be found in the overflowing rapids in the Waking Shores. They are found as very small red pellets near sulfur pools and can be very hard to spot. Thankfully though, you have your laser eye beam idol of Anara, which will help you point you in the right direction. I found pretty much all 50 rose gold at this location right here. And they come in stacks of 10 to 15, so it's not like you have to find 50 small items, more like 4 to 5. And then you once you have all 50 of the rose gold, all you need is 8 igneous flux. The hint for these tells you that they can be found where lava hits salt water. And there's pretty much just two spots for this. They are right here at these two locations. They are found in stacks of two and I had to go to both areas to find all eight of those. And once again, once you're there, the idol of Anara will help you find them once you're in the area. And when you've picked up the 50 rose gold and the 8 igneous flux, head to the earth waters forge. This is located at the base of the Obsidian Citadel at this location right here. And once you're here, you'll find Weaponsmith Korov once again, who will give you a quest to forge the Titan Key, accept it, and talk to him again to start forging. You'll get an extra action button during the quest to add the ingredients. And finally, click the middle of the forge to complete the forging of the Titan's Key, then turn in your quest and you'll get the achievement progress. Forging is key? Question mark. If you're having trouble either seeing Weaponsmith Korath or having a dialogue option for the quest or simply cannot use the forge, you may be in the wrong facing if you haven't completed the campaign on the character you're playing. However, you can skip to the correct face as long as you've completed the Waking Shore campaign on any other character. To do so, simply speak to this guy, Kellen Dormu, at this location right here. For the next part, as always, head to Veldragon's Inn and speak to Preservationist Kathos. From her, you'll receive a Maruk burial banner. This banner leads you to Marokai in the Unaran Plains at this location. Here, you want to talk to Sansok Khan and ask about how to properly bury Ishtar Rethon, who is the hunter the banner belongs to. After a little back and forth talking, you'll receive Ishtar Rethon's burial banner and be requested to find an NPC named Jara. Jara can be found in the Pinewood Post town at this location. She is the innkeeper and she will give you the Path of Ishtar drawing, which is the next clue. And this clue leads you to the Onara statue in Shikar Highlands at this location. We about your laser eye beam idol once you're in front of the statue, and it'll lead you to find an aged marker just nearby the statue. 
click it and you'll be lead on a path to find four more markers to in the end find the burial spot. The second marker is located in the cavern in the Roaring Dragon Springs at this location. It's inside the cave and up the highest floor. Use your idol again to drag it down once close. Click the marker and head on to the third marker which is in the Windsong Rise, just left of the main altar on the top floor. Remember to click it again and head for the fourth marker which will be by the largest burial mound in the Eternal Kurgans at this location. It can be found inside the mound in the second room on your left. Click it and move on to the final marker. The final marker can be found by the entrance to Dread Snare Caverns in the Primordial Vale at this location. This marker is covered by webs when you encounter it, so to be able to click it you'll have to whip out your torch of Pyrith to burn the webs away. Then click it again and you'll be led to the final resting place where you'll plant the banner. It's located inside the Dread Snare Caverns, so just head inside and keep right and up the ramp and in the end of the top floor you'll find the spot to plant the banner. Do so and you'll be awarded with the A Proper Burial Achievement Progress. Once again, for the next part, head to the Inanimal Dragon and pick up the next quest from Bobby. You'll receive a clue that hints you to go to the Old Karasan Raid. Old Karasan can be found in Deadwind Pass at this location. Enter the raid and from here you'll have to make your way to the Guardian's Library. To get there, you'll have to kill Morose and then head on the way through the Opera and finally up to the Curator and you'll enter the library as the room after Curator's room. If you're like me and have a very bad memory and don't know your way around old Karasan, I'll just let this clip run out so you can just follow along my video to find your way. If you know the way, simply skip to the next section of the video for the next step. Once you've reached the library, you'll have to find four books. Equip your laser eye beam idol and your thinking cap and use the cords in the clue to find the books. If you don't want to do it yourself, here is the location of all four books and you'll have to do them in the correct order. I'll also let this clip run so you can see exactly which books to find and where to find them. When clicking the fourth and final book, you'll be given a quest to return to Old Dragon. Simply do so and turn in the quest, and you'll receive the achievement progress, a current tour knowledge for the achievement Who Done It. For the next part, head back to the inn and speak to Bob Carlyle. He'll send you off to see Feng Lehut, the NPC that made you the thinking cap in one of the first secrets, located also in Valdragon, just west from the inn. 
When you talk to her, you'll receive the clue for today. And the funny part is that this was bugged today when I interacted with Feng Li Hood. She already had another quest available that was instantly completed and it gave me the achievement progress for today. So if you don't want to do the secret and it's still bugged, you can just get the progress by simply completing the A complete inventory quest from Feng Li Hood. However, I did go out of the way to do the secrets anyway for you guys, and just in case the secret has been fixed once you're watching this video. So let's move on. The clue hints you to six notes located all around Valdraken. The first one can be found inside the auction house to the left at this location. If you're having trouble locating the notes once you're close, as they kind of blend in with the environment, you can use your laser eye beam idle to zone in on it. Click the note and move on to the second note, which can be found in the transmogrifier house in Valdraken, just left of the entrance on a square nexus box at this location. And the third note can be found in a house with two quarreling gardeners, straight west from the ruby enclave on your left. It's located in the back of the house on a small barrel with a rig on to the right. The fourth note is found in the sapphire enclave in the house to the east, just right of the entrance. The fifth idol can be found in the artisan's market behind the general goods vendor stand, who's got the southernmost stand in the market. And the final note can be found inside of Dragon's Inn, where you have to bow to the statue in the back of the regular inn to enter a secret room, and in here you'll find the note sitting on a box in the back of the room to the left. Once you've interacted with all six notes, simply head back to Fengli Hood and complete the quest to gain under suspicion for the achievement who done it. The second to last part of the achievement starts from the innkeeper in the Beldragon's Inn. He'll give you a clue to find a orb called the Orb of Rathmus, and it's hinted to be in the Storm Shroud Peaks, which is in this area right here. So to get the Orb of Rathmus, you'll actually have to find three separate pieces of orb and combine them. They can be found in the three different caves in the Storm Shroud Peaks in Thaldrasis. I'll leave the codes for the entrances of the caves as well as where to find the orbs once you've sought to unlock them in the description. And keep in mind you have to find the clue for the orbs to be able to pick them up. So head on to these codes right here for the first entrance. Equip your laser eye beam idol and your torch of pyrith and head to the left back of the cave. This will uncover a clue hidden in the wall. The clue will give you cords for the first piece of orb. Either use your thinking cap or my cords to locate the first piece, which is just outside the cave on your right down the hill. Then head to the next cave at this location. Once again, the hidden clue is at the left back of the cave, and you'll need to activate the torch of Pyrith to uncover it. Read it and head to the chords written, or simply, once again, just use my chords and pick up the second piece of orb. The clue for the third and final piece of orb can be found in the bigger cave in the area. You'll find the entrance right about here. The clue is hidden in the lower middle part. Once again, make sure to have the torch equipped to uncover it. Then head to this location right here and pick up the final piece of orb. Click the orbs in your bag and you'll receive the final quest for today, which leads you back to the innkeeper in Valdragon to turn it in. Do so and you'll be awarded with the A Curious Orb Progress for the achievement Who Done It. For the final part of these secrets, we start in Valdragon's Inn with a quest from Preservationist Carthos, and you'll receive a clue that hints you to go to Tearshold. It hints at a certain lock having to be bypassed. To do so, it requires four steps. The first lock requires the Torch of Pyrith. Equip this and then what you want to do is light the orbs in the hands of the eight Keeper statues around Tears Hold. You can simply have your torch equipped and fly nearby them. There might be an internal cooldown if someone else just did it right before you, but just keep flying past them until you see the fire from the torch react with the orbs. As said, there is eight in total and these are the locations. Once all eight have been lit, you want to head to the visage of Keeper Tour, and here you want to transmark the Titan's key you obtained earlier. Then you want to go and look straight into the face here on the wall in the back. As you can see, I kind of did it on accident, but I believe that's what you have to do. And this should trigger Tyr's approval of you. I am a bit unsure if, if you have to transmark it or not, but if you can, just do it, I guess. When he approves you, you'll get a buff called Tyr's Favor. 
Also, this buff approval thing seems to have an internal cooldown, so if you don't get the buff immediately, just run around the room for a minute or two and you should get it eventually. Tears Favor will make most mobs inside Tears Hold friendly to you, and the next clue leads you into the hold to find four artifacts. If you fly down in the hold, you'll see that there is some rooms on the outer edge of the hold. You want to enter every single one of these rooms. They are spread across the floors in there, so if my cords lead you into a wall, you're probably on the wrong floor. Anyway, once inside one of the rooms, activate your idol of Onara and it'll point you towards some broken urns on the ground, which you will have to loot. You have to find six of these in total. These are the locations for all of them. You'll get six items, two rare items and four uncommon. Click the uncommon items to combine them into two more rare items and you should end up with four rare artifacts. The Titan Focusing Crystal, the Titan Block Key, the Large Titan Capacitor and the Titan Energy Cube. And you'll need to place each of these into a Titan Power Relay. The Titan Power Relay are located inside the rooms around Tears Hold with a giant laser beam inside them. It looks kind of like this. If you're having trouble locating the relays once inside the laser beam rooms, the idol can help you point towards them. The four laser beam rooms are located at these locations. Once you've placed all the artifacts in the relays, head to the platform above the Visage of Tyr, where you'll find a console with a quest for you at this location. Pick up the quest and click it once again, choose the dialogue option and a small role-playing scene will occur on the platform with Tithris, Bobby and Kathos. Tithris seems to be a bad guy and you will have to brutally kill this guy together with his bodyguard Amaranth. You can then loot the orb of Rathmus from Tithris. You put the orb back in its place on the console and a chest will spawn, secure the mysterious chest artifact spawns right next to the orb, then just pick up the orb and go to Preservationist Carthos on the platform to turn in the quest. And there you have it. The final achievement progress for the achievement who done it is now complete and you'll find Patty in your bags. And that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy your new mount and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and want to support me. And maybe leave a comment for Mr. Algorithm. If you have any questions, also leave a comment. I'll be glad to answer it every single one of them. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can help me other ways. Just check the links in the description. Thank you for watching again. Bye.